And we're back with some more oxygen not included on the mini baby base map. And today we're going to be trying to put in a liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen setup. And we're going to make it really, really tiny and try and cram it in right here. I think I've got a build that will work and hopefully it should. But I haven't really been able to stress test it over several hundred cycles in uh, the test debug map. But, you know, sometimes you got to live dangerously, even on a tiny little map like this. At the moment, we're just collecting uh, the resources we need from space. Right now, we've got a rocket on its way to this oily asteroid, and it's going to pick us up some isoresin. Uh, that will allow us to get some, insu uh, some build some insulation. We've already picked up a couple of loads of fullerene from this planet, which means we've already got our ha hands on about 600 kilos of supercoolant. Where's our liquids? Ah, uh, yeah, 600 kilos of supercoolant. That should be more than enough. In fact, I may have went a little bit overboard there, but better safe than sorry. While we're working on this, we're going to have to rip out the entire rocket silo. There's just, there's, there's not going to be enough room to keep launching rockets while we're building it in here, and the telescope will have to be moved. Well, we'll, we'll worry about all that after we get it started. Yeah, let's just skip this forward a bit until we've got some more insulation under our belts. One thing I would really like to point out is this has just come off dormancy right now, and you'll notice that our liquid tanks here, we've still got, well, one, two, three, four, five. We've got five full liquid tanks and some, uh, some spares. That means we're not going through this much water. We don't need this much yet, but once we've got a rocketry program up and running, we might need a little bit more water. We've just got a nice, safe buffer. This means we can live entirely off this if things ever go wrong, and it looks like it's raining again. <laughs> Gotta love this game. All right, this is an interesting cargo. Um, you'll notice here that we've got solid methane and solid carbon dioxide in here. The carbon dioxide, I don't really care about, but that methane, the moment it, it heats up a little bit, it will become natural gas. Hmm. What to do with all of that natural gas? Ah, damn it. There's there's literally a ton of natural gas in there. Uh, but I can't think of a way to extract it carefully. As in, it's just, uh, it's going to be frozen and we'd have to defrost it when we needed it. Otherwise, it's just going to explode outwards. And you know what? We're going to make this, yeah, 20 kilos. And we're going to dump it in here. We'll dump it right beside the oil refinery and the oil refinery can warm it up, maybe. All right, we'll empty out the storage here. It took me a second to get this working because, uh... Yeah, it turns out there was no liquefiable stuff beforehand, or it, it wasn't showing up until we actually popped it out. Now it should be under consumable ore, and you know what, we'll make that a high priority. I would like my... over there, come on, pick it up, pick it up. We want that stuff before it pops in here, otherwise we'll just have a, a missile silo or a rocket silo full of it. Yeah, okay, perfect, that'll go in there, eventually it will melt, and worst case scenario, it'll cool down that whole area. There we go, it's getting nice and chill. That should hopefully stop that liquid lock from overheating. At that, though, should provide us with all we need to produce insulation. How much insulation are we going to get out of that? We're going to need 120 kilos of isoresin to make as much insulation as we need, which is eight pieces. You know what, let's just put in a good number. We're going to need that for this this, this build we're going to do over here. Uh, at the same time, I think, can we... Oh, I already filled this up with petroleum. You know what, we'll send it on one more cargo mission. We'll grab one more load of isoresin and methane or whatever's out there, and then I gotta make sure to disconnect the piping before it returns. Yeah, that, that might be an idea. Oh, uh, first though, we better fuel it up, yeah. Gantry. Yeah, I've been literally building a gantry here, filling it up with oxalite, de deconstructing the gantry after it's filled. Yeah, we don't have time for any fancy automated stuff, there's just not enough space either. Goodbye, rocket at high speeds. And it's gone. <laughs> this uh, fast speed mod just makes things so much quicker. It's, it's really handy at this point of the game when you're trying to get things done. Otherwise, they can take forever while you're waiting for space uh, space resources to come back in. Gold amalgam? Can't go wrong. Perfect. Well, now that grief is back and we've got all of our all of our necessary resources, I have noticed a small problem. For some reason, we don't have enough reed fiber. I have no idea how. We've had we've had Draco farms going for... I, I can't even remember how long. And there's always a few regular Dracos in there to drop reed fiber. I think I'm going to have to do some minor changes here just to make sure that we get more reed fiber so that we can get our insulation up faster. So I'm thinking... Yeah, I'm thinking we're going to have to put in mealwood. Um, we're going to have to spend dirt on mealwood for when I get this stage of the game. It feels a bit weird, but we do have 16 tons of this stuff. These, uh, this compost provided by our ethanol is definitely keeping us in dirt. So yeah, mealwood it is, unfortunately, just so we can get enough reed fiber to make the insulation we require. All right, we have one regular Draco and one glossy Draco. Hopefully they will provide us with what we need. What's this one? Yeah, the regular Dracos won't can't survive on the bristle blossoms, so I had to throw in the meal wood. I could also use bam lily, of course, but then I'd have to start messing around with chlorine. No, no, we can pay the dirt costs. We were fine for now. But with all of that done, where is it? Uh, have you gotten out of that ship yet? Get out. Come on, go back to sorting yourself out. Unfortunately, their morale is going to be through the floor, so their stress is going to be horrendous. At the same time, we got to demolish this rocket to make room for our build. 
Uh, I think we deconstruct that immediately, because the moment I knock out that capsule, of course, it will go back to detecting meteors and open the doors again. Yes, uh, end of the last episode, a few people helpfully pointed out in the comments that I had uh, completely neglected to uh, change that around when I demolished the, ro the rocket last time. So when I demolished the capsule at the stop top, the, uh, the rock sensor decided that, oh yes, we're going to detect meteors now and open the door whenever they happen. But we fix that now. We'll just vacuum out this area and get it prepped. Give me two minutes there. All right, let's vacuum out this area and see if it'll fit. I'm just going to dump all the oxygen in here. It can, it can escape at the top eventually, probably. I don't really care too much anyway. Eh, get all of that stuff out of there. Oh, the, uh, the algae never, ever turned in the end. Oh, well. Pity. Wait, no, some of it did. Some of it's missing. There used to be two blobs there. I think one of them actually flipped it at some point. Oh, you get in there. You want to get the last of that out of there. And once we've got the oxygen out of there, we can start on our little build. This is what I came up with in Debug. I've been doing some playing around since. If you've seen my uh, channel update, you, you've probably seen something very similar to this. But this is just a, a, a slight variant on it where I managed to cram it down just a little bit smaller and a little bit more compact. Uh, it's got some nice features to it, but first, let's see if we can actually build it. So right now, you'll see we've just, uh, I've started putting in the basics down here. This is thermium liquid pumps. We don't need thermium, but honestly, we have so much of this stuff. Why not go a bit crazy? We've got 7.7 .7 tons of this stuff left. We might as well go a bit nuts while we're at it. Now, let me think about where we're going to place everything in. We've got, uh, these, those can all go. And we'll deconstruct all the stuff we don't need for now. I had to break back in here and do some minor changes. I figured we'd put in some on-off switches for these pumps. They weren't included in the original design, but we've got a few tiles down here we can cram stuff into, so why not use them? That allows us to turn off the liquid and hydrogen pumps when we need to. Uh, but we will have to vacuum this place out again, but it should only take a couple of... It should take more than a minute, what with the speed mod going. This is going to be a very snug... See, this is going to be a very snug little design we're building here. Uh, should I be using ceramic for this? Yeah, you know what? For this area, I'm thinking ceramic is a good idea. Just hopefully no one entombs themselves or traps themselves while we do this. Oh, got the plumbing in. Oh, damn it, I forgot to put in the gas piping. Hmm, one moment. Damn it, I can't finish the gas piping. I've just realized that uh, right here is where I want to have the piece of insulation. We're going to leave that vent inside this tank and we're not going to cut off the oxygen from the outside. Or the hydrogen for that matter. So that insulated type pipe, gas pipe there is made of insulation. So that any gas that does end up stuck behind there while this tank is full won't liquefy and damage the pipe. And I have to use insulation. I can't use ceramic. It's not good enough. Uh, yeah, testing proved that, unfortunately. So I need and no one more piece of insulation. Unfortunately, if we check under the ventilation system for insulated gas piping, we're short by, oh, 100 kilos. How do we get that 100 kilos? Well, feed fiber. That's what we're missing. So we need those uh, Drekos to start dropping five units of reed fiber. You know, sometime in the near future, that would be nice. In the meantime, I'm just going to start laying down the rest of this. We can... This area sealed up should be fine. I think we've got everything we need in there. I'll have to double check, of course, all of these before we close it up. I, there's always something I forget. Uh, yeah, we'll leave those doors closed. We're going to have to fill this up with water as well. About a ton of water. Well, I think I'm going to wait until we've got most of this sealed down the side. We're going to have to brick this up as we go... And then this thing only needs to be, what, five tiles wide? Six tiles total? Yeah, so it only needs to be six tiles wide. So we're going to have this double layer, just in case any meteors come in here and hit this, and we'll probably replace this outside layer with bunker tiles. But first, insulation. To help speed things along, all that excess polluted water we've got going on, we're going to dump that into some reed fiber. I really wish I had a lot more space up here, but we don't. Otherwise, I would just cram in an absolute gargantuan amount of this stuff. You know what? Maybe if we rip out that bed. Yeah, we don't need that bed anymore. We get rid of that. We get rid of this. Get rid of that. We'll put in a few more. Well, they'll have this reed fiber, fiber cranked out in no time. All right, now we got to fill this up, and I need to fill this up quite high. I think that's enough. What do we have? Over 946 kilos. If you go above 1,000, this will start overflowing over the edges, I think. Yeah, I think we'll call that a full... Yeah, this is going to be a sort of a heat sink. Or cold sink. Ah. Temperature regulator. Temperature regulator will go with. This is going to store up a bunch of chill that we can then dump into our hydrogen and oxygen when needs be. It'll help stabilize things nicely. And where were we over here? Ah, yes, reed fiber. Are you going? Why are you not both halted irrigation? Oh, is that because I drained out a whole bunch of um, water out of the system? Yeah, so now it has to fill back up again. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll have reed fiber shortly. We're almost good to go. Almost. Finally, after so much struggle, we have our insulated gas pipe. <laughs> 
Right, we've got the one. Then we'll make the rest out of Igneous Rock or whatever, who cares. Uh, yeah, just go over there for now. We'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do with you later. All right, time to just start bricking this sucker in. We're going to double layer it. We should be able to just build it all the way up. And we've already got the piping in. Yeah, it's a little bit of a mess, but it'll make more sense when it's turned on. This here is going to be the aqua tuna we stick on top of it. Though we're going to have to put in a layer of petroleum to make sure nothing goes wrong. Oh, I forgot, where am I going to put in the output pipe for this? The output pipe for the steam turbine. A little bit of water to get us started. That's going to, well, way, way, way too much water. I like to use way too much just in case it helps stabilize the temperature. That way, if things do start to go awry, you have plenty of time to catch up and adapt. When dealing with this, we're going to have to put in a layer that we're going to be putting in. Oh, what? Mando? What? How long has Mando been in there? What the? Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Did I miss that? Um... One moment, uh, emergency plans to rescue Mando into effect. Right, that was, uh, yes, that was completely normal. Uh, we're going to dump some petroleum there in the bottom layer as well. I had to go back for the petroleum anyway. Thank God I remember the petroleum, otherwise Mando might have been in there a little while longer. Damn it, I just realized I need to put temperature shift plates in there to help force temperature into those doors. Ah, we're going back in. We're going back in again. But we're doing this the smart way. We're going to come in diagonally. That should work. Okay, well, it'll work for one of them. You know what? We might be able to just move, delete that tile and still get it juggling. Could we? You know what? We'll find out in a minute. I'm going to have to delete it, aren't I? Oh, please don't let a bunch of petroleum in there. Damn it. Why did the petroleum have to go in there? It could have went anywhere else, but it decided it had to go in there. Maybe we can mop it up. Turns out more petroleum decided to want to be in there. So we are going to mop up all the petroleum. We'll, we'll sort this out. Just uh, give me a minute to start moving liquids about the place. This is going to be a pain in the butt. And there we go. I think I think we finally have it built. Oh, okay. Done. Dusted. Steam turbine in place. I think we're just missing the output pipe. Let's not forget that. I've done that once or twice. It always ends badly. All right, so that feeds in there. Now we just got to fill this loop with super coolant. And then start dumping gases in there. Where's our gases? Please tell me. Yep, I definitely put the gas pipes in. Perfect. Uh, so, super coolant in here first will be the first order of business. One small little downside to this build is I couldn't quite make this perfect. As in, if you fill this while the aqua tuner is active, it won't, uh, it won't work. It'll clog up once it stops, uh, once the aqua tuner stops. So I'm going to make sure to fill this while the aqua tuner has no power going to it. And that should give us a perfect fill. Let me just mop up that junk and get rid of it. And we're just about ready to start this up. The, oh, why is there... One minute while I empty out these pipes. This is about to become my most expensive project. Uh, the reason being, this aqua tuner is going to be running uh, pretty much flat out. Um, yeah, that that's going to start heating things up in there very, very quickly. Now, as it rises up the temperature there, it should be lowering the temperature of the water in here. We're going to freeze this stuff down to minus negative 200 and something. But until we do that, we don't really want to start pumping gases in here just yet. But in the meantime, we can start figuring out where we're going to get the gases from. Namely, we're going to be tapping into this hydrogen vent over here. Finally, this hydrogen vent will get some use. Also, the hydrogen we're currently dumping into this system will also get put over there. Yeah, let me do some planning here in the background. First thing we're going to do is we're going to tap into this hydrogen vent because we have thermium. And because we've got thermium, we don't have to care about the temperature. It comes out at 500C. This thing doesn't care. Oh, we better grab that out of there and then we're going to close this up. We don't really need the algae, but oh yeah, I've turned off algae, algae sweeping, haven't I? You know what? Let's sweep that stuff up now. We don't need it anymore. And where did that polluted water come from? Did someone? Are the toilets busted? Please tell me the toilets are not busted. No? Toilets should be fine. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to worry about it in a minute. We're going to finish the hydrogen. All right, we've managed to vacuum that out, seal it up. Uh, yeah, we've got power going to it. We've got automation going to it. Now we've just got to run a gas pipe through the map. Ugh. And take all of that gas over there to get turned into hydrogen. Uh, let's do a little planning here, shall we? There we go. All the way across the map. Uh, no, whoa, whoa. why are you on? Why are you on? I thought I turned you off. Uh, if the temperature is above. Yeah, there you go. Stop dumping all of that out. We're going to have to uh, twist that all up and right back in here. Uh, once that's done, how's that going over there? Minus 62. Perfect. Okay. All good. Yep, all the excess is being 
overflow that direction, in which case we can cut that off. Hydrogen is no longer going to be a primary source of power, unfortunately. But don't worry, we'll be putting in a sour gas boiler soon enough. Once we get this sorted. Hey, you, if the temperature pressure is above 500, I want you to activate. Yes, perfect, there we go. Kick down the pressure, otherwise it was overpressurizing the hydrogen vent. Now, all of you, where are you going? Oh, yes, you know where to go, don't you? Well, uh, there's nowhere for it to really go until this backs up a bit. Oh, we might want to put in a gas tank as well. Damn it, I just realized. With nowhere to actually back up into, nowhere to really store up the hydrogen, I think we'll just have to live with storing the hydrogen in here. That should give us four tons of hydrogen, which will be more than enough for any rocketry system. And, oh, damn it, I think I'm out of time. One second, let me check the gateway and see what we've got going on. Nothing we care about. I don't even want the food. It would interfere with the barbecue. Um, we're just going to reject all of those. We don't even want them. Wait, there is some things we can do. We can actually... Yeah, we can sort out the oxygen as well. We're going to bridge all the oxygen across here. And bring it right over also. Oh, wow, there's so much messy piping. Do I need that? Yes, I do. That is for the natural gas. And we'll probably end up moving that again in the future. We're going to be moving a lot of things around. Just not quite yet. These are going to be some... But this build over here, this is final. We'll never be moving that one again. It's good to actually get some of those knocked out of the way. Uh, you... Boom. Perfect. So that will feed in the oxygen. Now if you look over here, this is set to draw temperature. Or close that door and engage with the temperature shift plates there. That one's popped already. Seriously? We barely put any oxygen in there. Uh, eh. A few of the quirks of this that may not be so obvious when we first started up. One, this is uh, it disengages these doors. The doors draw temperature out of these temperature shift plates. Temperature shift plates. There's a temperature shift plate here behind that liquid vent. So the two of them, it, you've basically got diamond temperature transfer between these two areas, and it allows you to chill down this area really well. And then what happens is, liquid just sort of, well, falls down here. And when it falls down here, it'll probably flash the gas the moment it touches the pump, but it will keep going round and round until eventually this whole area is chill enough for liquid hydrogen to form. Also something similar over here though, what's the temperature at the moment? We need minus 183 for condensation, so let's say minus, eh, let's go with 190 actually. Oxygen's got quite a lot of leeway in it. So that engages the door there. Now you'll notice that I'm only using low pressure gas vents here. There's actually method to that insanity too. I originally tried using high pressure gas vents. Oh, we've already got liquid oxygen forming. Um, I originally tried using high pressure gas vents. But what would happen is when the liquid got up this high, You'd end up with about five or six kilos of liquid covering the gas vent, and then the gas vent would just keep dumping lots and lots of oxygen or hydrogen into the system, and the system couldn't freeze it fast enough, and then you'd end up with this massive pocket of hydrogen stuck here. You were you were basically creating an infant gas storage, but it kind of overloaded the system and it couldn't keep up anymore. It was an annoyance. So what I did instead was I switched into these normal gas vents, and that way when the liquid gets up high enough to block the gas vent, you're fine. It just it, it, one or two kilos will form, it'll block the gas vent, and you're good to go. Well, that's what it did in testing. We'll see how it, it actually works out in real. And there we go. We have liquid oxygen forming already. And if we do turn on that liquid pump, it'll send it out here all the way around and back in again so we can dump the liquid back in. By using the gas vents this way, you don't need to actually have an off switch. There's no off switch or automation off switch. The moment the gas vent overpressurizes, we stop feeding gas in. Downside, we did need a piece of insulated pipe behind it to keep it cool. Also, we're only using one cooling device up here. It's going to get a bit hot, about 217, I think it maxes out at. So we won't be getting perfect uh, performance out of the steam turbine. But to keep the steam turbine cool, super coolant. There is a layer of super coolant here. Just a little tiny layer, so it doesn't flood it. And our super coolant comes up here on its cooling loop and chills it down. Boom. Oh, and this, uh, this is very important. This sort of ice block, we could have used super coolant or something like that, but that would be, of course, incredibly expensive. But this block of ice here helps keep this whole area nice and chilled. So that means that we have a temperature to draw on when we have to flash freeze stuff. So what'll happen is once this gets low enough to freeze hydrogen, which is, well, minus 255, we're almost there. Once it gets that low, we'll start condensing hydrogen down here. While simultaneously using the exact same ice brick to condense the oxygen. And you may be thinking, well, this is going to overfreeze the oxygen. The, the window tile there is absolutely Baltic. However, what tends to happen, or what does happen is... That temperature shift plate is only interacting with these two t these tiles around here. It can't actually interact with the tiles down here. So until the liquid gets up to this section, we don't really care. And when the liquid does get up to that section, well then the temperature transfer will even out and those doors will disengage. It's currently 
That's a perfect vacuum. Well, it pretty much vacuums instantly around here all the time because of all the temperature transfer. You know what? Let's uh, fast forward a bit and see what happens. Oh, look. Everything just suddenly flashed to the liquid and dropped. Oh, hydrogen's kicking in as well. But no, it'll, it'll flash back and forth a bit just as it warms up. But I think... I think we're golden. Perfect. Come on. Give me more hydrogen. Give me more oxygen. Give me more everything. Once this is done, I think we'll replace this line here with some bunker tiles. I might... Oh... I, mean, I might want to break in there and place them with some bulkier tiles. Otherwise, we just end up some regular forming in there. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I am just going to revel in that being built. That is quite a mini but efficient one. If we, we could have used mini ga mini liquid pumps to make this smaller, then we would have had to use uh, liquid storage tanks to store up enough liquid. I mean, if I only made it three tiles or four tiles high, I wouldn't be able to store up enough. This way, we get to store enough liquid hydrogen and oxygen to refill the rocket any time it comes back. And by the time the rocket returns, we'll have enough uh, hydrogen or oxygen banked up sort of storage and liquid creation all at the same time. All right, though, I am out of time. I've got to get some. I've got to get some stuff edited and done and out the door. This will never get out. Anyway, I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut this out here. Uh, baby base is coming along a pace. I think next up we'll be putting together some liquid hydrogen and oxygen rockets, getting ourselves some resources, and uh, yeah, then going on to our sour gas boiler. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.